So far we've looked at visual and hearing impairments. Now we're going to look at a few other impairments and learn how to improve accessibility even more. When people think about web accessibility, people usually think of visual and hearing impairments first. However, there are many impairments that inhibit fine motor skills and muscle control and can also make muscle movement very slow. This includes cerebral palsy, stroke, Parkinson's disease, and many, many others. As you can imagine, this can make it very challenging or even impossible to click on links and buttons with speed and precision. Fortunately, there's plenty of things we can do to make sites more accessible for users with impaired mobility. First, try to make all the functionality on your site keyboard accessible. This is pretty easy to do because by default, almost all browsers and operating systems include robust keyboard navigation for web pages. What you need to look out for are instances where no keyboard control is available by default. Drag and drop interfaces come to mind along with gestural inputs and rich media content like Flash. This isn't always possible to implement directly, but at the very least, you should have an alternative or a workaround that's fully navigable without the use of a mouse. Next, make sure that you provide enough time for users to accomplish tasks. On a static web page, this is probably already done, but if your site features rotating images or moving elements, you need to give a reasonable amount of time for a person to click on something, even if it's via keyboard navigation. Sometimes there are time-based situations, like bidding on an auction item, where there's really no way you can slow time down. That leads to the next tip. You should try to minimize the number of steps that are needed to accomplish a task. This could mean creating a special set of keyboard shortcuts, or just simplifying your user interface and cutting down the amount of clicking and typing needed to get from A to B. One way that you can help users navigate websites more quickly is by utilizing large clickable areas, especially for the most common actions. It's also important that the steps that need to be taken are put together in a logical fashion. Sometimes designers can find it challenging to make large buttons and links look elegant and understandable, but this is really important because having clear steps and large clickable areas improves usability for anyone using your web pages. This is the promotional site for Basecamp, the flagship product from 37 Signals. They make excellent use of contrast, composition, and shape to indicate what should be done next. It's very obvious that they want you to click this green button that says plans and pricing. Once you click that button, you're taken to a sign up page where once again, there are several green buttons with white lettering that are in the same style as the previous button. Going one more page inward, you can see that this form has some nice large inputs and down at the bottom of the page, there's another green button. The thing I'd like to also highlight here is how consistent this user experience is. The next step is always highlighted by a green button. Making the path forward very clear is important because misclicks can be frustrating for any user, but especially when using a mouse is difficult. Let's look at another example. This is the sign up page for rubygems.org. This is a fun interface and it looks kind of cool. These extremely large inputs are not only novel though, they also provide large clickable areas and a very simple path forward. The inputs aren't this large for the sake of accessibility and this is going way overboard, but it makes for an interesting case study because it shows how large clickable areas can be integrated into a design in an interesting way. The last example here is the new Carsonified homepage. Each one of these images is nice and large, and right from the home page, it's easy to get to any of the major points of interest. When you look at this design, this might all seem very obvious, but imagine how difficult this page could be made to be. There could be drop-down menus at the top with sub-menus for events in different cities, and that would be tricky to navigate for individuals that either use keyboard navigation or have difficulty using a mouse with a high degree of precision. 
it's very easy to roll off of a drop down menu and lose the item you were trying to select. Plus, the links usually have to be made very small. One last thing I'd like you to notice here is that similar to the other two sites we looked at, there are very few choices. Simply by having fewer links and choices, you can avoid a lot of misclicks and really distill what links are important in your design. That about wraps up the basics of accessibility. Hopefully, you've learned how important and easy it can be to make your content available to everyone.